Good morning and welcome everyone. We appreciate your time this morning and uh, are excited to walk you through uh, this webinar today, specifically uh, presenting on, on Snowfly. And uh, several of you, we, we met at Call Center Week a couple weeks ago. Um, others, you may have been invited by a coworker or uh, shown uh, the the technology by someone else and uh, however you ended up here we uh, we're excited to have you and appreciate your uh, your attendance this morning uh, my name is Darren Briggs and I am the president of Snowfly and I also have uh, presenting with me today uh, is Tyler Mitchell uh, who is uh, one of our uh, main account managers and is responsible for a lot of the onboarding of new clients and then uh, we also have Ryan Dietrich, who is also uh, one of our account managers, client managers. And uh, so the two of them will, will be participating with me as well uh, today uh, and also involved in, uh, in answering questions as we go through the webinar. Um, as I said in the chat, you, uh, you can answer or answer any or I'm sorry, ask any questions uh, through the questions panel. And we will answer those as we go through and or at the end of the webinar. Uh, we are also recording the webinar, so that recording will be available uh, following the end of the webinar uh, for those who are interested in that. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and we'll talk through a little bit of the agenda here. Uh, and, but first we wanted to just kind of introduce uh, who we are and what we do. So Snowfly, we are a, a software company that specializes in uh, gamification-based uh, incentive programs. And uh, we were founded in 1999 by Dr. Brooks Mitchell and was really based upon this idea of using proven behavioral psychology principles to enact change within employees and within businesses. And, and he was a, a pioneer in taking those concepts and uh, tying them to a software tool that could be implemented within uh, businesses. And, and now today we are a fully cloud-based solution and we offer uh, customized products for each individual client that we work with that is based upon their specific needs and their unique situation. And, and we'll kind of walk through some of that today and, and show you that. Um, but again, as we said, please, if you have questions, uh, you know, go ahead and enter them in there or, uh, or put them in the chat. Um, this is how we're going to kind of run the webinar today, and, and we're going to fly through a lot of information. So as I said, because uh, we have the webinar recorded, you know, go ahead and take notes if you want, but uh, the, the recorded webinar will be available so that you can listen to it or watch it again if, uh, if you're interested. But we're going to go through a little bit of uh, some high-level uh, behavioral psychology 101 basically kind of reviewing the science behind Snowfly and, and how and why our approach works. Um, and then Tyler is actually going to walk us through a, a very unique and very cool uh, contact center example or case study from, uh, from our past here. And, and then uh, depending on how much time we have at the end, uh, we're going to do just a really quick, real high level demo of our software. Um, but ultimately, at the end of uh, this presentation, you know, our, our hope is that you, uh, you, you see some, some power here, you, you see what it is that we're doing, and, uh, and then we'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, uh, with each of you to, um, to schedule you know, a more formal demo and to answer your specific questions for your specific needs. So with that, we'll, we'll jump into the uh, science behind Snowfly here. And, and where I wanted to start um, with this is, Everything that we do is based upon this idea of, you know, there are two ways to, to motivate people. There, there is reinforcement, i.e. positive rewards, and there is punishment, i.e. Uh, negative rewards. And, you know, these, these, th <laughs> this is pretty general stuff, but uh, two real kind of world-renowned or famous psychologists in history, uh, the first was, um, uh, Abraham Maslow and, and his idea was you know there's a hierarchy of needs and as you meet the lower needs then you can move up on that pyramid of, of further needs and then taking his information 
and, and his uh, basis, then another psychologist named B.F. Skinner uh, started working with this idea of reinforcement and punishment. Um, so go to the next slide, please. And the idea that he sort of came up with was he, he started to realize that, you know, you can reinforce behavior in, in a couple of different ways. Um, and having where you, where you get something you want, that's a positive reinforcement. If you remove uh, a pain or avoid something that you don't want, that's a ne negative reinforcement, and that's actually also a, uh, a positive type experience. Or you get something you don't want, in other words, you're punished, or you lose something you have and you do want, and that's a penalty. And, and he studied these four different ways of, of uh, providing reinforcement, and he did so using uh, experiments on rats and, uh, and on pigeons and things. And, and sort of what he came up with in the end was that there are multiple different ways to provide this reinforcement, but if you really want to improve behavior, uh, then Next slide. If you really want to improve behavior, then you're, you're looking for these green areas where you're adding something positive to the environment or you're removing something negative. Um, and if you, if you see here, um, click again, please. As you reward or provide relief, behavior improves. And as you penalize or, uh, or add pain, then behavior tends to over time decrease or go down. Uh, Aubrey Daniels is, is uh, a modern day psychologist who has really taken this uh, technology to, or this idea, the, uh, these concepts to the next level. And, and what he discovered, and here's this, this kind of neat slide, is that as uh, people are given minimum requirements, over time what they figure out is, okay, here's the things I have to do and and here's where my performance level uh, gets to it's it's right to that spot of just above doing the minimum to get by but what we're really looking for is this next idea of trying to tap into this sense of what do I want to do and then really taking and filling in that gap or that discretionary effort and, and so what Snowfly is built, has built our success upon is helping people and helping companies tap into the quote-unquote discretionary effort area of performance. That by giving folks uh, requirements or targeted behaviors and then creating rewards uh, that are uh, tied to those targeted behaviors, what we tend to see is that we are able to increase that want to do curve and, and uh, tie into that discretionary effort. And that discretionary effort is the difference between success and huge success, or it's the difference between uh, you know, minimal success and, and failure of a company. So um, next slide, please. And this was really uh, B.F. Skinner's kind of, uh, at, at the end of it all, this, this was his, his finding that the closer you implement a reinforcer, in other words, uh, that pain or punishment or the reward or, or the removal of pain, um, to the behavior that's performed, the greater the chance you have of changing that behavior. And in his experiments with the, the rats and the, the pigeons, um, when they would perform a des desired behavior or, or, uh, or not do something that they were supposed to, he would immediately Re or uh, reinforce that with either a reward or a punishment. And over time, he could then reinforce without having to immediately give the reward or the punishment, and he was able to create and enact long-term behavior change. Next slide. And what he discovered was that by having this, this here quadrant that you see here, um, there were four different ways that he could reinforce behavior. The first was to give a fixed ratio. In other words, every time uh, a subject would perform a behavior, uh, then, uh, or I'm sorry, every interval of time, so every number of times that a specific behavior was performed, then a reward was given. And then he experimented with doing a fixed interval. In other words, every 
uh, happens every time a fixed amount of time has passed. So after every five minutes or 10 minutes or one hour, regardless of what the performance was uh, within that. A fixed interval is a good example of a paycheck. You receive a paycheck every two weeks or every month, uh, regardless of what uh, the performance is. The, the fixed ratio amount there in the upper left, that is uh, the idea that you know every five times a, uh, a call is, is answered, then you're going to receive a bonus or something like that. Uh, bottom left is the variable ratio. And what this means is it happens on average every, a given number of times that same behavior is performed, but it's not pre necessarily predictable when exactly that's going to happen. So for example, um, a slot machine is a variable ratio reinforcer uh, because there are algorithms programmed in and, and, and typically they, those are controlled and, and held very close to the vest by the gaming commissions of the various states, i.e. the Nevada Gaming Commission, there are rules in place for how often that slot machine has to pay out. So let's say it's every 15 pulls or whatever it may be. But um, it's not going to pull every or pay out every 15 times on add and clockwork, it, but on average over time it's going to pay out uh, every 15 times. So that's what a variable ratio is. And then finally there's variable interval, which uh, happens on a completely unpredictable schedule. Uh, and that is akin to uh, going fishing. You know, you're not guaranteed you're going to catch a fish, and you're not guaranteed that it's going to be you know every hour, or it's even going to happen at all. Um, but it also could be that it every cast it happens you know time after time after time. That's variable interval. And what uh, Skinner discovered was that the variable ratio reinforcement was by far the most effective because the unpredictability of when it's going to happen, but knowing for sure that it is going to happen, uh, became a very powerful motivator. Next slide, please. Oh. And so as you can see here, there, these are some examples of, uh, of each of those um, different intervals there. So or I'm sorry, different reinforcing schedules. So real quick, gamification uh, is, is how we apply these principles. And, but we wanted to explain that gamification is this application of using game design uh, within scenarios that maybe aren't typically using gaming. Uh, for example, in the workplace. But what we want to emphasize is that um, gamification is not turning the workplace, and go ahead and click again. Gamification is not turning the workplace into a video game environment or, or turning everything into a game. Uh, it, it is not having people sit and play, you know, I don't know, Halo or whatever other popular game there is at the time. Um, it's about using gaming principles to, uh, to change behavior or engage an audience. Next slide. So this is a really interesting study here. Um, this study was done, The Honest Truth About Dishonesty, and what they did was they rigged, rigged a vending machine and uh, they offered some people the opportunity to have a consistent 30% discount off of, of any item. In other words, uh, if it was a dollar, then they were going to say, okay, you're going to only have to pay 70 cents. And then they did a similar... Uh, or a, a different control group where they said, okay, uh, we're also going to offer you uh, the, the chance to have, uh, to pay full price. So in other words, a dollar is a dollar, or you get a 30% chance of paying nothing. And so they were able to, to choose whether they wanted uh, one or the other. And the sales were 300% higher on the vending machine where they were offered a 70% chance of paying full, paying full price or that 30% chance of paying nothing. In other words, the opportunity to win big or to get something for free was much more appealing, and that is the same thing as a variable ratio, was much more appealing than the opportunity, the guarantee of having a 30% discount. Very interesting study. And, and a lot of uh, Snowfly science uh, uh, targets this same idea, the same tendency in human behavior. Next slide. Tyler, I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, talk through this slide here. Uh, I'm going to start it, but I know that you have a really interesting story here. So right. um, the, the idea here is that 
if I tell you at the beginning you are going to get a reward, that it's a hundred percent guarantee, um, then you you get excited, and that's what the red line is on the top. If I tell you that there's a zero percent probability of getting a reward, uh, you can see at the beginning here that first line there is is no dopamine level or no excitement spike there. And then if I tell you at the very beginning that there's a probability that you know a fifty percent probability that you're going to get a reward. Um, at the beginning, you, you have this sort of dopamine spike, like, oh, you're excited that there's a possibility. But then when we get to the reward stage on the end, if I tell you there's a 100% probability of getting a reward, and then you actually get the reward, when you get the reward, you don't get that dopamine release because you already expected it and you experienced that, uh, that excitement when you were given that stimulus. On the other hand, if I tell you that you're going to not get a reward at the beginning, you have no dopamine release then, but then I give you the reward and you get a quick spike, but it's actually not as big as the spike of when I told you that you had 100%. The interesting thing though is if I tell you that you only have a 50% chance of getting a reward, you get that dopamine spike at the beginning, you're excited about it, and then your dopamine continues to ramp up and stay at this higher level in anticipation of getting that reward. In other words, that uh, the idea that there's an unpredictability or unexpected uh, result where you don't know exactly what's going to happen, i.e., people sitting at a slot machine in Vegas for so long or, or playing uh, you know, crafts or whatever it is, that idea, that possibility that you might win something keeps people there and keeps people excited and keeps the dopamine there. Um, do you want to add anything there, Tyler? No. Uh, excuse me. You, you explained it very well. And pretty much perfect is even the even if you if you tell someone that you, they're not going to get a reward and they do that's an unexpected surprise and that's awesome that's great but you're not getting anything on the front end with this bottom opportunity you're getting both you're getting the excitement when you tell them hey here's a chance you're going to get a reward and you're getting the excitement and anticipation all the way until the reward comes right so you're getting just basically more of the dopamine release uh, with this with, with this 50 percent probability and, and that's really the key to a long-term engagement as well. So, uh, so with that, Tyler is now going to share a, a really cool success story of a client that uh, we work with and, and, uh, and walk through that process. Right. So thanks, Darren. And uh, I'm going to walk through this pretty quickly. Uh, we told you this would be a 30-minute webinar. We're going to hold true to that. And after this, we'll open up some questions. And then for those of you that want to stick around, uh, I can walk you through a five, six minute high level demo of our application to really illustrate in motion, I guess so to speak, uh, how a program that I'm about to show you would work uh, in reality. So uh, we were uh, engaged by an outsourced call center and they were essentially, their main target was to improve uh, customer satisfaction. And they wanted us to design the program, which meant helping them target goals and assign a value to them and then essentially implement the program we designed into our game-driven platform. And lastly, they were looking for an ROI analysis to basically show that it, it did work. So uh, in o the overview of the program was that uh, within a personal web-based account, agents could earn and receive tokens for achieving goals, their CSAT goals, and then they could use those tokens to play an online game of random chance, and each token yield could yield up to $50. And then lastly, they were able to convert those points to dollars. So here's a step-by-step -step illustration of how that worked. So step one was that the agent participating uh, must do something desirable for the company. They must achieve, do something worthy of recognition. And in this example, they were, uh, had to score, had to have a customer satisfaction score of six or seven, which was based on a post-call customer survey, a uh, seven-question seven survey where seven would be perfect and six would be close to perfect. So that's what they were told they had to do. Uh, or they ha and or they could have a weekly CSAT average of 6.5, or they could have seven surveys in a row. We call that the seven sevens uh, with a score of seven. So and there were many, there were actually a, quite a few more goals on top of this, all related to CSAT, but these are the three I'll focus on today. Uh, the science behind this is clearly and simply communicate expectations. Uh, Behavior Science 101, people need to know what is expected of them, and they need to know it clearly and needs to be simple. Tell me what you want me to do. So many incentive programs that equate that part of the equation is left out. People don't even know what they're supposed to do. Uh, and how can they do it if they don't know what they're supposed to do? So uh, that's the first, you know, some science behind this step. The second step was that the agent, uh, his account, 
his or her account was credited with game tokens. Some examples, seven, you know, achieve a score of seven would be five game tokens, six would be three game tokens, uh, seven sevens in a row would be ten tokens. So this actually would be in uh, the fixed reward schedule uh, in this example, meaning that every time you do one of these things, you are, you receive positive reinforcement. And uh, the agent quickly, uh, no later than the next day, was reinforced for these activities. And Darren spoke about that. You can't make them wait. They, they need to know exactly what they did to earn the positive reinforcement. And if there's a huge delay from the activity to the time they get reinforced, the reinforcement chain is broken. Again, B.F. Skinner's slide that Darren showed uh, pretty clearly illustrated when you can do that. And then on the back end, you're telling them again, reminding them exactly what they did to earn recognition. So when you give them their game tokens, you are telling them, here is why you're getting this, these five game tokens, because you had a score of seven on a customer survey. Constantly tell them. Again, something that's left out of many uh, incentive programs is people get the reward, but they're not really sure why they got the reward. Maybe they show up to work one day and there's a gift card on the desk that says, hey, thank you very much. Well, thank you for what? What did I do? And if they don't know what they did, they're not going to know they need to do it again. So these things all were incorporated into this program and need to be incorporated for this to be a successful program. So once they earned the tokens, they got to play a game of chance. So now we're getting into the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Darren, was the variable, uh, fixed, fixed variable uh, reinforcement that says, if you earn a game token, you get to play a quick game that will, over time, on average, yield 40 points. In this equation, in this example, the points were worth 40 cents. A minimum of 10 points and a maximum of 5,000 points. So they know that they're going to get something. And they know that there's a chance they could win $50. So this is when you're getting that dopamine on the front end that says, excellent, I've been rewarded, now something exciting is going to happen. The games are not skill-based, and Darren touched on that as well, talking about the definition of gamification. The skill in the game was, all, was, was in earning the game tokens. And I can't stress that enough. I always stress that when talking to uh, people about, about Snowfly. The skill is not in playing the game itself. They have to earn the opportunity to play the game. And they earned the opportunity to play the game by doing a specific targeted activity. In this case, it was uh, a, C set or a customer satisfaction related uh, goal. So uh, once they earned the points, I'm sorry, once they, once they won the points from the earned game token, they were able to convert those points to cash. Okay, so on a daily basis, uh, agents could go in and they could basically exchange their points for dollars that were placed on their own personal debit card that they were given as part of the program. So uh, in this example, one point equals one cent, and there was no minimum load. This again goes back to the quick turnaround. For example, if I perform today, I get money today. All right, and also something that we didn't really touch on, but it's very important in this example is that you're separating the incentive dollars from their paycheck dollars. This prevents entitlement. When you start adding bonuses to paycheck, it gets lumped in to their, their job, is basically the everyday job. This is what I'm entitled to. This is my salary. Keep it different so they know that the debit card money is something they did above and beyond, and it doesn't get lumped in to just their entitled salary. So that was the basic equation. And uh, let me show you now quickly uh, the results that happened as a result of this. So there was a pilot group and that was selected, and the pilot group was consistently below the call center customer service uh, percentage average. And within the first month of the program launching, they were able to significantly close the gap, and by completion of the pilot, the group was at or above the call center customer service average. So here's a perfect graph that illustrated that. And I love this graph because you can see there's a mirror here, right? They're basically mirror, uh, providing almost an exact trend of the rest of the call center, which tells me there are some seasonal trends, and uh, they're experiencing the same things the non-pilot group was experiencing, uh, but they were just always a little below. So when Snowfly Phase 1 was implemented, you can see right away, huge spike, and they were able to get up at or above the call center average. So the same agents 
by the way, being rewarded the same amount of money. The, the non-participant group was rewarded incentives in a different fashion. Uh, the pilot group was rewarded incentives using a Snowfly program. And right away, there was a spike. And I like this graph as well because, again, this is the same agents handling the exact same type of calls in the exact seasonal trends. And you can see that on average, the participant group was still a little below the non-participant group. But you can see during that same time period, the non-participant group declined. Conversely, the participant group increased. So that's what you're seeing the gap close. The, 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 the participant group declined a little. They increased. So it's the same external environment, the same calls, the same seasonal trends, and the participant agent was able to improve versus decreasing uh, like the rest of the like, like the uh, remainder of the call center. So uh, just the, the agent reception, this, this basically shows that there was engagement. An average user logged in nine times a week, 36 times a month. Uh, they played 38 games a week. And I like these last two because 91% of all game tokens earned were converted to points within four days. Okay, They didn't hold these game tokens. They basically said, when I earn my tokens, I want the excitement. I want to be able to play them. 92% uh, of points are redeemed, converted to cash within two weeks. So not quite the as quick of a turnaround. And this is based on different people and different personalities. Some people do want to save up for a bigger prize. Uh, a trip, a, a, a large value item. Others want the, the points or the dollars to supplement their everyday lives. They'd rather have five, six, seven dollars today than save up and have you know a hundred dollars at the end of the month. It just depends on the type of person. So that was uh, obviously a very quick uh, overview. And just here's some comments that uh, were shared during a survey. And you can see here that uh, there's a couple things I like to highlight. Uh, one of which is that they're able to load the money on their card, and they love that they can earn the tokens on a daily basis, not having to wait and reward them very incrementally to get the, uh, the, the big picture goals met. So with that, um, let's open up. Uh, well, Darren, you can talk about some next steps uh, if they want to learn more, and then uh, we can open up for questions. And then if you want to stick around, we can do a quick demo. Great, thanks, Ty. So, yeah, the the real next steps are, um, you know, w to schedule your your one on one consultation uh, and and demo in more in depth demo with us, uh, and begin thinking about what the, some of those targeted behaviors like Ty was just showing in that case study might potentially be, um, and where you uh, would like to see your changes first. In other words, maybe what some low hanging fruit would be within your organization to address. Uh, and then from there, you know, check out our website. I, there's lots of more additional information there, case studies, uh, white papers, and, and such. And of course, you know, we, we are available on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, so you can engage with us there. Um, and we will be following up with, uh, with each of you as well to, uh, to, to schedule that one-on-one -on -one personal consultation and demo with you. And uh, as Tyler said, you know, at this point now, uh, it is open for questions. Um, we did get one question so far, and that was uh, basically the question was asking, you know, what are some some common things that that people address uh, within Snowfly? And it's in some ways it's kind of a loaded question because every customer is is really different, and their needs are different. Um, every business has different things, but in the call center arena, uh, some things that we tend to uh, to see over and over and over again are uh, things like addressing tenure and or you know retention rates. Uh, we address things like uh, ad adherence to schedule or attendance, um, customer satisfaction scores, uh, average handle time, uh, all of those sorts of general call center statistics are things that we are very, very experienced in working with and have had a lot of success in helping our clients uh, fix some of those areas. So, so great question, and we'd love to discuss uh, more of that with you and, and what your specific needs may be. Um, our half an hour is up, so as promised, we will, at this point, uh, we will officially uh, close the webinar, but for those who did want to stay on and see 
the, the, the quick five, six minute demo here. Uh, Ty is going to do that uh, real quick and just kind of walk through some of the, the highlights. Uh, but again, like, as we said, you know, more in-depth demo will be done individually with each of you as we start through that process. So, so I'm going to walk you really quickly through an example very similar to what I just discussed in the success story. Uh, what we do is we create a web-based platform and we customize it and give our clients a unique URL address and brand it for them. So anyone involved with the program gets their own web-based account. They can access, of course, uh, from a PC or from a mobile device. And I'm logging in, and this person's name is Lindsay. And you can see here that Lindsay has waiting for her uh, some rewards that she can claim. Okay, so I'm seeing here that the most recent reward that I received was I got, in this case, a scorecard of 8 to 8.99. And that is worth to me 360 game tokens. That's a weekly goal, and I can claim that. What am I doing when I claim this reward? I'm being reminded this is exactly what you did on this date and this is why you're getting rewarded, a key part to the incentive process. So now that I've earned game tokens, I now have 360 game tokens. I can go ahead and claim all these at once if I so choose. And I can now go, again being reminded, I can now go to my game room and I can play a quick game with those tokens. And guess what kind of game we have? A surprise, a slot machine. Uh, that's one of several games. There's five games in this example. I think we have up to nine or ten. Uh, again, I can't stress enough that this part of the process is not skill, okay? But what I can basically say is that as a participant, I know that when I play a game, I'm going to win points. I just don't know how many. That's the excitement. My day could change. My weekend could change in the next five seconds. So in that case, I played 10 or uh, 21 tokens, and I won 61 points. One thing to stress here is that when my tokens are gone, I can't buy more tokens. I can't risk my previous earnings and buy more tokens. The only way I earn the opportunity to play the game is by doing a specific targeted goal. So again, I could play and I could accumulate. I can accumulate points each time I play. And now on the back end, I'm able to take these points and quickly convert them to dollars. And the most popular prize we offer, and we do offer others, uh, are the reloadable debit cards. And this essentially is a way for me to go and convert my points. And I have 2,000 in this example, 2,194. And I can now go and I can say I want to convert 1,000 of those points. And that equals $10. I complete the transaction. And the money, in most cases, will be in my car by the time I work, leave the, leave the uh, office today. So a very quick turnaround. I performed today. I got rewarded today. I leave the office with $10 more than I came in with. So that's it in a nutshell. And I can see here that most, if not all, of you did stay on the uh, demo. So that's great. I appreciate you doing that. And I do have a few more questions uh, that came in. Um, one of which, and I knew I'd probably get this, is about the data. How do we essentially know that someone qualified for call quality, average call time adherence? How are we getting that data? And I'll, I'll let Darren expand on that a little, but the, the answer, the short answer is any numerous ways, and that's something we'll customize with you. It could be a batch file, it could be an uploaded template, or it could be something uh, like an API. We're doing a direct plug-in to uh, your quality tracker, to your ACD, whatever the case may be. Darren, any uh, feedback on that process? No, that's great. Uh, it, it basically, you, you hit it on the head there. It's, we will work with you to, to uh, receive your data and or uh, pull your data in whichever way makes the most sense for your business and for the frequency in which uh, that data transfer is, uh, needs to happen. So we, we work with you, and, and we make that a process that uh, – that we automate as much as possible. So, and here's a question, and I, it, it's, uh, I don't know if they, it's a pretty good lead-in. Uh, they're asking about scorecards and uh, teams. Uh, you know, do you offer scorecards or team contests? And uh, we can do that. And I do have an example of that to show. Actually, uh, we call it the engagement room, and this is a way for you to display to your call center agents their scorecard and their or a, a customized scorecard, or maybe their comparison to uh, their coworkers. So you can see here this person's scorecard 
what they achieve, what they achieve for this week, their QA, their absenteeism, uh, their AHT, and you can also see a comparison of, for example, AHT versus the rest of the call center uh, for, in this case, the life of the program. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Those were uh, great questions, um, and and we hope you uh, enjoyed the time today. And we will be following up with each of you again, but uh, w without uh, anything else here. Um, we appreciate the time and look forward to working with you. Thanks for joining, and, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, guys.